Hey, this is pretty much done now. Uh, a little more. First step to building this corner shelf project is to create the frames. So I have two frames here and uh, they're basically a mirror image of each other except for this one the rail is just a little bit narrower than this rail and that's because when I put them together um, I want them to be the same measurement out so I basically just subtracted the thickness of this um, to, to make this rail thinner so I've just accommodated for that so, you know, not a, too bad a build. All the angles are 10 degrees. So the first thing I did is I ripped all the strips on the, the table saw at, at two inches, or you could even just rip them at an inch and seven eighths. I ripped them at two inches and then I put them through the planer on edge in really long strips and, and then took it down to an inch and seven eighths. So all these are inch and seven eighths in width, except for this narrow one here. So all these pieces are the same width, except for this guy and um, this one's an inch and an eighth so it's just a little bit less um, as far as that goes uh, the next thing I did is start cutting out the pieces and I'll give you all the measurements of those but um, they all have just a, a 10 degree angle so anything with an angle it's going to be 10 degrees so these are all 10 degree angles going down there's a 10 degree angle on the top of this one a 10 degree angle on the bottom um, so th these two right here have no angles all the rest have an angle on one side, except for these have an angle on two sides, two ends. And um, so when I was assembling this, so then on the back I have some pocket holes. You can kind of see um, what I have there for pocket holes. When I was assembling this, I started on the, the, the nice and 90 degree point. So I started at the 90 degree connection. So I did this connection first. I moved up two inches, put this piece together, and then I measured down. Um, 14 and 7 eighths and then I, I measured you want this distance to be the same and this distance to be the same so when you connect this piece you want to try to get those measurements the same you know after you make your two inch mark when you're making the two inch mark here this one's a little bit different you can't measure two inches down the leg because it's an angle you got to go come across so you just have to be careful when you're doing that um, and you're connecting that so I just went all the way across I connected these this distance is the same, this distance is the same. So they're all 14 and about 7 eighths. And then um, that kind of allows. So then I put this piece on last. So first I did, you know, I started at the bottom. I did this piece to this piece and then this one. And then this connection and this connection. And then I started over on this, this corner here, connected that. And then I worked my way down um, trying to measure so they were the, they were the same. And then I did the same on this one. So I started my connections on this go on this narrow one, and then I worked my way down. So pretty easy build, really. If you have all the measurements um, that I'll give you, um, it's a, pr a pretty pretty nice project. There doesn't even have to be a lot of waste because when you're cutting this 10 degree angle, if you just flip the board, then there's no waste. Um, you can use the the angle off the the other piece that you just cut off of, and then you just keep going. Um, you will have to obviously do 90s as well, but that does help cut down on some waste. So I like the measurements that I have. They're pretty good measurements. I, I like the height and everything. And then I think I'm going to like the way the screws go, the shelves go together. The next step on these frames is just to power sand the faces. I'm just trying to make sure everything's nice and smooth and flat. It'll be a lot easier to do this now before I get the shelves put on than to try to do it um, you know, around the shelf. So I'm just going to take both of these faces and I'm going to power sand those with the Orbit sander. Work them down to maybe 120 grit or, or so depending on the kind of wood and just try to get any pencil marks or ripple marks I have off these before I go on to the next step. Take my frame that is wider on the back side. So not the skinny one over here, but the wider one. And my goal is to measure 3 eighths of an inch in um, going, going up and down this vertical piece. So you're gonna like this part, this measurement here going this way doesn't really matter about eight eight to ten inches so something like that a little bit more I start kind of a couple inches up from the bottom 
But this measurement going this way, we want it to be 3 8 center. So I just kind of keep doing that. I go work my way all the way up, uh, measuring that. And then um, I'm going to take a small drill bit and drill all the way through um, where, my, where my 3 8 is. So when I say small drill bit, probably like eighth of an inch diameter or 3 16 I'm just going to try to drill nice and straight, hang it off the table so that we don't drill into the table. And then on the back side, I'm going to take a bigger drill bit and I'm going to drill uh, about a 3 8 diameter hole. And this, the only purpose of this hole is just so the, the screw can kind of sit flush with uh, the back side here. Alright, you don't want to go super deep with this hole. You just want to go, if you look, I'm only, I'm only down about an eighth of an inch. So you could even use a countersink bit. Um, just, I'm not going down very far. All right, so I've sanded this and I've drilled the holes on this side. So now I'm going to clamp these together, and then I can, I can start putting the screws in. So, you know, we uh, this isn't gonna, it's gonna hold quite a, a bit with just the screws in. <clears throat> yeah, some glue would be nice, but I find that glue makes such a mess sometimes when you're trying to put a finish on. It repels the finish. And sometimes it's better off just not using glue if you're not worried about, you know, there being a strength problem. And I'm really not. I have quite a few screws in here, and I don't think it's going to be an issue. But I'm going to try to line this up nice and flush. And I'm going to use some square bits for this, probably about an inch and a quarter square. Um, so inch and a quarter in length. This is a coarse thread screw. Um, if you're using a harder wood, I'd use um, a fine thread screw. Poplar here is kind of right in between the two, so I'm going to see how this one responds, and I might actually, you know, switch over to another one. But so I have it laying right nice and uh, flush on the table, and then I just work my way down. I usually work my way from the bottom to the top, but I thought since uh, where the camera posi was positioned, so I usually work my way from one end to the next. And, you know, another easy way to do this would just be to hang it on the side of the table. Okay, clamp it down, and then you can focus on getting your screws, you know, nice and straight. So that way you don't have to be juggling too much at once. So, you know, if I'm over here, and um, I should probably put another clamp here, but I'm just coming down here, tighten those up, get that. That's another way you can, you can put this together. So I'm going to go ahead and put this together. Make sure your pocket holes are facing the corner. Like, I should see pocket holes right now. And, um, uh, and that, that way those will be hidden up against the wall when this project's done. All right, so I have the unit put together back here. It's assembled, and um, now I'm working on the shelves. So for the shelves, the first step really is to, to find a board that's going to cover your, your, your main widths and get out of the two opposite corners. So for this, you might have to glue a couple pieces together. I did find some pretty wide boards that were pretty flat, so I'm going to go for it. But normally if you <clears throat> laminate these together and flip the end grains, you know, so there's you know, a, a frown, smile, frown, smile, like I've taught you, that's going to help keep this board flatter and it'll turn out just a little bit better. But um, so I jointed both edges, but it's not a parallel board. So I just jointed both edges but it might be a wider measurement down here than up here. And um, so then I made this corner 90 degrees. So this corner right here, and I made a, a little 90 degree mark um, just to help me remember that. But you could do this on the panel saw or the table saw with the miter gauge, cut that at 90 degrees. And then I did this one over here at 90 degrees too. So that just kind of helps tell me where I'm, where I'm at. So now I can take my large compass. I'm gonna show you how to cross cut these on the table saw. This is a pretty wide board, so I'm using the miter gauge. So the miter gauge is right here. I'm making sure I don't use the fence because I don't want these pieces to get caught in there and shoot back at me. So I'm just gonna hold this nice and tight and then I'll move this through. And my goal is just to square end. So this will be my 90 degree corner then, and then I would mark that corner. You can check it with a square, not a bad idea to do that. You could even put the square on here and mark your line. That would even be a, a, a really good idea too. But this is one way um, to cross cut these, these wide pieces for your shelf. 
Oh, all right, I wasn't able to find my big compass, so I made one real quick. This is super easy to do, okay? I just found some thin wood. I drilled a hole a little smaller than the diameter of the pencil, wedged the pencil in there, put a screw out here at um, 13 and a half was my measurement I was going for. The screw has no threads where the board is, so that's good. You don't want the threads to be where the board is. So I'm putting this right about at my corner. I'm in just a tiny bit, okay? And um, then I just make my mark. And, um, you know, it's that easy. You know, you can make a compass super easy. So there you see it. diameter blade on the bandsaw that would have helped prevent um, you know pinching the blade but you know the bandsaw blade I had was decent for this and um, you know I've done this quite a bit but it, you know that would be considered like a relief cut breaking this down a little bit instead of trying to take it all in one cut um, so now I'm going to sand it up to the, the line exciting part here um, I after I assembled this I made a center mark down all these where the shelves are gonna be okay so I just found the center I used a square to do this and uh, this is a much easier way to do this I just put the square up against here on the center part and made some marks at every shelf and then once I did that I drilled three holes because I'm gonna use I'm gonna put the screws into the back so I just drilled three holes. Remember right here you have these two screws going right here. So you kind of have to <clears throat> move the, the hole in a little bit or else you'll hit those screws. So then the other thing I did is I decided to round this edge. Um, I was going to do that before I assembled it. But you can still really easily do it right here. So while it's down here on, on this, I can just take my router and I have my round over bit. I'm just using a 3 16 round over. And then I'm just go, starting at this end, going down, and just rounding that corner. So then to do the other side, oops, I just flip the whole thing around like this. And then I did, the, did this side too. So that's ready to go. I got my shelves all sanded. After I drilled all those holes, though, I want to tell you, I did go back through and re-sand it. Because there was enough, um, you know, flash left over from drilling the hole that when you go to put on the, <clears throat> the shelf, it's gonna kind of impede that a little bit. So make sure you take your time to sand. I mean, I'm not showing you all this time I'm spending on the sanding. Sanding is really important. If you can do it as you go, then at the end you don't have very much to do. So it's really frustrating if you wait to the end and everything's harder to sand. It's a lot more work and it's not near as enjoyable because you've, you've put it all off to the end. So um, I have all my shelves ready to go. Uh, one thing I did on these, is I rounded these two, so I just used that same router bit. I didn't do the back section, I just did the front, and I did on both the top and bottom. So I like everything to have kind of a nice edge. I find that my furniture wears a lot nicer if it has a, <clears throat> a rounded edge. Sharp corners tend to dent and show wear the paint chips or the finish chips. So 
there you go I'm about ready to start putting this together so I'm excited about that all right so I'm putting these on now you'll notice that I'm using a clamp <clears throat> I'm trying to measure so this distance is the same I'm trying to get that shelf centered I just do one side at a time if the shelf is warped at all if you start it so this board will tend to warp this way or this way so I just start at one end and then I can bend it a little bit as I put the three screws in. So that's a technique that will kind of help out. But I'm just working my way down, installing these, these shelves using the clamp. And that really helps me out. I didn't countersink the back of these, but you could. Alright, this is pretty much done now. Uh, a little more sanding to do on it and then I can start to put a finish or paint on there. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that yet, but I think it's a pretty fun build. You know, you got quite a few tools you use. Uh, there's some thinking involved, and uh, but not so much thinking that it becomes cumbersome. Gives you a chance to, you know, have a nice relaxing build really. So. Um, I encourage you to, you know, pick pick one of these kind of projects. And uh, I have seen people take it to the next level and pick pictures behind it. And um, if you decide to do that, you know, there's a little bit more you could do there. I'm in the corner and you can, you know, display some things on it. And it's a nice use of a corner, really. So there you have it. Have a great day.